demo. You're what? You don't have to be. Hello and welcome to this special follow-up to the story of Zamo Maguire, the Grange Hill schoolboy who got hooked on heroin. But it's not just Zamo and it's not just heroin. In real life, drugs have become a big problem and that's what this program is all about. We'll be finding out some of the facts about drugs and offering what we hope is helpful and realistic advice. Some of the cast of Grange Hill, including Lee MacDonald, who plays Zamo, are here in the studio and we'll have the first chance to see and hear a new pop record and video they've made of the anti-drug song that you heard at the beginning. Drugs are highly controversial and we're going to try to give you a balanced picture. We won't exaggerate the risks, but then we hardly need to. The fact is that thousands of people who thought that they could handle drugs do get into serious problems with them. Now, if you have a problem or any questions about drugs, you can phone our confidential helpline. Our team of experts will do their very best to give you what help you need and suggest where you can turn for local help and information. These are the numbers. You can dial 01, if you're outside London, 992 5522. 992 5522. And in Scotland, if you're outside Glasgow, dial 041, followed by 357 1774. 357 1774 for Glasgow. We'll be giving those numbers again at the end of the programme, so there's time to get a pen if you want to drop them down. But if you don't have a problem, and most young people don't, you might nonetheless be offered drugs or come into contact with people who use them. So we've prepared a fact sheet, and we'll give you details later. First, a glimpse behind the scenes and a reminder of how the story of Zamo unfolded. How much do you need? Why? 25 quid, do. There's a decanter, cut glass. No, a posher than that, smooth, worth a lot. My mum's always on about it. How many bags does that buy you at the going rate? How long will that last you? A few days? What's he talking about? Bags of what? We have reason to believe that he's stealing because he's using drugs. Heroin, to be more precise. Heroin? Grange Hill's production team were determined Zamo's story should be true to life. A lot of expert advice came from Jampi Al Hadaf, who helps addicts in London. I think that what's actually happening in his head, which we don't get to hear, is that he is confused and he's not sure and he's quite scared. If Zamo had found one adult, one person that he could have trusted and talked through what was happening to him, without fear that that person would go and blab the thing to everybody else, then maybe it would have stopped. And I think that it might be better to have him there in a rehabilitation house where he is much more positive about the future, is much more optimistic. You mustn't worry. I'm fine. I like it here. I like the gardening. I was just saying, I thought you'd be in bed. Oh, no. I see, the thing is, I thought I could control it. Heroin. Just do a bit now and again. A very dramatic performance there from Lee MacDonald, who plays Zamo, and Lee is with us now. Lee, how much did you personally know about heroin before Zamo started getting into trouble? Nothing at all, just what I'd seen on the television. So how did you prepare for it? Um, well, I watched lots of videos, um, spoke to people who were addicts, and uh, just read up, so basically just listening to... The best advice I got was listening to an addict who came down, and he spoke to me, and it was really, really good. How much like Zamo are you? I mean, could this happen to you, do you think? Uh, n no, not at all. Doing the programme is really sort of filled my mind up with stuff about heroin I never knew before at all, so I wouldn't touch the stuff, not at all. Where's You're that pretty one? sure? Yeah, definitely. Well, also, there's Maluki Christie who plays Kevin. Maluki, you saw it happening to Zamo, didn't you, drawing this last series. What would you do, do you think, if it happened to a friend of yours? I think it depends, like, how far they got involved in drugs and why and what type of drugs they were involved in. But I think the most important thing I could do is, like, try and help them and not put the blame on them and disown them. And Melissa Wilkes, who's Jackie in Grandchild. Melissa, you all saw it happening to Zamo. Mm. Why do you think he started on the drugs? Why Zamo? 
I think Zamo was influenced <clears throat> by the wrong sort of people and it just shows that it's not, uh, you wouldn't say, a rough person getting into drugs more than a really nice person because as everybody knows Zamo was the really nice character in it and it can just He's one of the last everyone. people you'd imagine I suppose Anyone. really. Yeah. Well, thanks very much indeed. More from the Grandshaw people later. But first, as they say, let's take a break. Hey, Sean. Sean, come here. Get yourself a cab back to my place, eh? Oh, cheers. Thanks. Now, listen, if, uh, if anybody does offer you anything, just ask yourself why they're offering it, eh? Well, it makes you feel good, I suppose. Well, it might start feeling good, yeah, but it won't end up that way, I promise you. Now, why should they want you to feel good anyway, eh? It costs money. They want you to take drugs so they can buy some more for themselves. It's my decision whether to risk it or not. It's my life. Yeah, you're right. It is your life. Well, that was part of the film Minder, A Little Bit of Give and Take, which is being shown in every school in the country as part of the government's anti-drug campaign. But if drugs like heroin are so harmful, why do people still decide to take them? The answer is easy to understand if you think about other drugs that people take for pleasure, like alcohol or cigarettes. As doctors keep on saying cigarettes are killers, about 100,000 people die each year as a result of smoking. Yet like lemmings, we as a nation smoke around 100,000 million cigarettes each year. But each smoker manages to convince himself or herself that it won't happen to them, or that they'll give up before something terrible does happen to them. They give in to all the pressures from friends and acquaintances to start, and then they find they simply don't have the willpower to stop. And that's the danger of so many drugs. Friends might tell you it's okay, but in their hearts they either know they're lying or they're very gullible. And a whole range of drugs and other substances can mess you up. Last year, the BBC carried out the biggest research ever undertaken into drug abuse in Britain. Thousands of viewers were asked by the Drug Watch programme to fill in detailed questionnaires. And almost all of them who'd tried drugs said they'd started because they wanted to fit in with other people. If other people used them, they thought that they should. But the survey also brought out, for the first time, the sheer scale of misery that drug abuse has caused, not just to the users, but to their friends and to their families. We talked to John and Betty Bowen and their daughter Paula. Their son Peter's drug problem started when he was 11. Now, eight years later, he doesn't live at home. Peter used to get frustrated and angry and his victim was always Paula. Um, so there was a lot of arguing and fighting and, you, you know, it was pretty bad for us as parents. I mean, we were tensed up and always on the alert having to handle and cope with it. Um, it certainly wasn't a relaxed family type of atmosphere in any way. He didn't act like my older brother, he acted as if he was more like a younger brother, knocking about like that. He used to be stupid and just sort of causing arguments and everything. Paula's boyfriend Danny had a drug problem too, but she helped him to stop glue sniffing. And um, I kept trying to get hold of it in it. And I got hold of it in the end, and I said that's going to track it away, and he go, yeah, I don't think he believed I would, in it? Afterwards, he said he was glad I'd done it. Well, I said he was glad I'd done it. She's been a model support for him. She's been someone probably for him to lean on. Who knows if Peter was ever in the fortunate position uh, of meeting a girl who would do the same for him. Perhaps he'll stand a chance. If he asks for help, if he cries out for help, the help is there. But until he does, we just have to sit back and wait and help and pray. The fact is, drug use can and does cause misery for family and friends. And it can affect the way people look at you. According to the Drug Watch survey, what happened to Zamo in Grange Hill happens to thousands of young people. People they want as friends get sick of them and end up by abandoning them. But there are other risks that start much sooner. To start, most of the drugs we're talking about are illegal. That means criminal. If you're caught, even with what you think is a soft drug, you may be disgraced, and you could get a criminal conviction that'll stay with you for the rest of your life and make it even harder to get a job. 
Drugs are expensive. As we know, Zamo had to cheat and steal. Half of all the heroin users in Britain have got convictions for burglary or theft. Then, of course, there's the risk of injury or death. Now, actually, despite the scary headlines, relatively few people die from drug abuse. But most users will become ill sometime, and many will damage their health permanently. It happens even if you're careful. Maybe the first time, maybe the hundredth. The big danger is that it's simply unpredictable. There are three main reasons. First, substances including glues, aerosols and many medicines make you unsteady and stop you thinking straight. So you're prone to accidents, sometimes very bad ones. Second, your body gets used to things. It's what's called tolerance. So you need more and more of a drug to get the same effect, making it more and more likely you'll poison yourself. Third, you usually haven't got a clue about what you're taking. And if you don't believe me, look at this. This straightforward white powder. So is this. And so is this. Now, which of these substances is for cleaning the bath, for scouring it? Which is heroin and which is chalk? Actually, even experts find it hard to tell the difference. Don't believe those American movies where the cop puts some powder on his tongue and knows the answer straight away. In real life, they need laboratories. The problem is that all drugs sold on the open market are heavily contaminated. People have cut them, as they call it. That means diluted them to make more money. So different drugs may come to look very similar indeed, and you're not sure what they are or how strong they are. Even if you're sold tablets or capsules, you can't be sure. Now, let's take another break. Anyone who takes drugs must be out of order. And anyone who pushes you into drugs is no friend. Drugs are a dead end. They waste your time, damage your body, lead you nowhere. Life can be boring, but it's never that bad. There are a million better things to get into. If you use your imagination, they're not all glamorous, but so what? These things take skill, determination, guts, a mind of your own. You'll never get as high as that on drugs, so leave them out. Be all you can be. Choose life, not drugs. That was part of a television campaign by the Scottish Health Education Group. Well, now it's time for an experiment. Thank you, Erkan Mustafa, revealing another talent besides playing Roland. He plays the drums. We have here five volunteers who've agreed to help us out. Now, Erkan is going to tap out some beats on the drum. Erkan. And all we're going to do is count them. How many were there? Six. Six. While they're counting, let me let Six. you into a secret. Once again. Four of the five have been told to cheat. Now watch what happens when Nick scratches his nose. They're all going to add one to the number of drum beats. But the one on the right isn't in on this. What Twelve. we want to find out Twelve. is, will he conform to those Twelve. around him? Right, and once more, please. <coughs> Thirteen. 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 Right. Now, let me tell you that you have got it wrong. I have. <laughs> Were you aware that you'd done so? You weren't. Now, let me let you into a secret. <laughs> Look, you have done something which actually almost everybody does do, placed in your position. We've cheated on you a bit. <laughs> everybody else here has been told, when I scratched my nose, <laughs> that they were to add one. I and thought I did when I, <laughs> he done 12. And I thought, I said, we'll do 13. Now, why did you follow suit? I don't know, I felt silly otherwise. That's right. <laughs> now, let me assure you, reassure you, there's no reason for you to feel that. silly. What you've actually done is actually normal. It's what ordinary people do. 
And that experiment, let me tell you, works over and over again, whether with youngsters, whether with professors of mathematics. And it shows you just how easily influenced we all can be by people around us. The same pressure that makes us get it wrong when we do something as simple as count of 10 or 11 or 12 can make us get it wrong when we're offered drugs. So, what can you do if you are offered them? It's quite likely to be someone you know rather than a complete stranger who makes the offer. So it might not be that easy to say no. There are a number of ways that you could try. And Lee, Maluki and Melissa are going to help us show some of them. Here, you want to try some of these? No, thanks. Well, that's one way. No thanks. Just being simple and polite and firm. You could also give a reason. How about some of these? No, thanks. I don't. Well, how about this idea? It's called broken record. And that's when the pressure is really on, when somebody goes on and on and on and never lets up. Do you fancy trying some of this? No, thanks. Oh, go on, just try it. No, thanks. Go on, it's great. Everyone else is. No, thanks. <laughs> You're not scared, are you? Just try it. No, thanks. Well, they're just a few ideas, but there are plenty of other ways as well. The important thing is that if you're in a tricky situation, stick to your guns. And if possible, try not to get into it in the first place. In America, they seem to get everything sooner and bigger than we do in the United Kingdom. And that goes for drug abuse. So they've had longer to think up ideas to deal with it. Bingo! 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 This is Spring Island School in Washington, D.C. The cheerleaders are one of the many ways that they've come up with here in their fight against the problem. Sport plays a big part and they have a scheme they call S-A-N-D, SAND. Operation SAND stands for sports activities, not drugs. And the thing about Operation SAND that it's so great, you know, it gives a person an alternative. I mean, the thing is, people tend to get involved with drugs because they have nothing else to do. So what Operation Sand does is, give, is, let them, is let them know that there's an alternative to take something else to do to preoccupy their time. The drugs is not the only thing to do that can, you know, take up all their time and keep them involved. So what we're trying to do, we're trying to let them know, hey, it's okay to play sports. It's okay to do something positive, something constructive. And that's our main goal. Yeah, I've accomplished my personal goals. Because this is the school's rap room where people can talk over their problems and being part of a group means that they give a lot of support to each other. I did that because it's a commitment to myself. Your personal goal may be for you not to use drugs. They even sign contracts promising to reach personal targets like keeping up to scratch with schoolwork and not taking drugs. This music video was another way to get the message over to young people. And of course the song, Just Say No, has been used here by Drug Watch. Well that video has been shown lots of times on American television, but the song has never been released as a record. Well that is, not until now. The Grange Hillcast have gone into the recording studio and made their own version of the song, Just Say No, and a video. And here it is.
no need First a taste, then a craving, then it turned to greed Calling me your main man, you didn't really understand After all you did to me, expected me to shake your hand No! Don't listen, don't listen to The Grange Hill version of Just Say No. Looked a lot of fun to do, was it? You enjoyed it? Let's hope it does some good. Did, Lee, what do you think of it? It's the first time you've probably seen the finished version. Yeah, I thought it was good. It was really enjoyable to make and it showed that on the video, which is good. Great. Well, uh, that song is now available from today on BBC Records. And everybody who took part, the actors, the musicians, they gave their services free because all the profits from the record will go to the drugs charity SCODA. That stands for the Standing Conference on Drug Abuse and towards a variety of schemes to help groups tackling the problems throughout the country. And pictures from our Just Say No video and the words of our song are in our fact sheet. It has lots of useful information and it's available as a pullout in this week's issue, Number One magazine. Now this is one way that you can get it, or else you can write to us with a large stamped address envelope. Now obviously it's got to be the size of a magazine. Put one envelope addressed to yourself inside another one addressed to us and we'll send you a copy free. Here's the address. It's not just Zamo, BBC Television, London W12 8QT. And that address is in Radio Times and on CFAX, page 184. And there's a copy of that leaflet going to every secondary school in the country on the BBC regular mailing in the summer. And a reminder that our helpline is open now and our team is taking calls if you've got a drug problem and want advice and information. Now here are the numbers again. In London it's 01992 01, the London code, 992 -5522. Or in Scotland it's 041, that's the code for Glasgow, 357 1774. 041 357 1774. And this is a confidential service and it'll carry on for another three hours and then all day tomorrow. If there's one thing that really counts, is that in the end, it's up to you. And we hope that you make the wise decision. Bye for now. Bye-bye.